in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed there was a little boy in the Bible called Samuel. When, do you know why God had to allow Hannah to vow a vow before Samuel came? If she did not have to wait that long, Samuel will never become a prophet because she would not take him to the temple. But the training demanded that he will leave his physical father and mother. This is how this destiny thing is serious. That there are some of you, you did not grow up with your parents. You don't even know why. Because your parents would never have allowed you to come for a meeting like this. So God had to literally make you get admission in a university you did not plan for. That is how much God can move people to make sure they find that pathway. Samuel, you have the destiny of being the great Israel, but your mother cannot train you. No, it is not given to her. Your father, Elkanah, cannot train you. It will take Eli to train you. But the compassion of your parents will not allow them to release you for destiny. So God had to wait until Anna said, Lord, I covenant with you. If you give me that child, I will not interrupt the part of his training. She prayed once, once, and Samuel came. When Samuel came, watch this. Samuel is sleeping close to the ark. Look at the kind of consecration that brought that prophet. I hope you know Samuel did not even have an opportunity to do many things because he was in the temple. His vessel had to be so pure to carry that kind of mantle that will ordain kings. So because of that, there was no risk. God had to make sure he remained in the temple. And one night, the boy was sleeping and he hears a voice. And he got up and went to Samuel. And Samuel said, no, 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 no. Uh, Eli." And Eli said, no, go back and sleep. And he went back to sleep. Hmm. And the voice came again. And when it came, Eli got up. Uh, Samuel got up and went to Eli. And Eli said, I'm not the one. But he said, ah, I understand. There is a path God takes men who will become prophets. Your season is starting. He said, next time when he speaks, I am your teacher, but I'm not your only teacher. There is another teacher too. We are in partnership. Say, speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. And that became what gave birth to the mighty Samuel. If Samuel did not rise, Saul will not rise. The kings that you see would not rise because he was the one who ordained them. Only God knows how many people today who would have been healed if you had found your path early in life. Only God knows how many people today as a kingdom financier you would have stopped their children from becoming prostitutes if only you manifested. Consecration is not just abstaining from sin and distractions, but wholeheartedly devoting yourself to that which your destiny demands. The Bible says, No man that warreth entangles himself with the affairs of this world. You know what that means? that when you discover Jesus you will find your place there is a way he will start building you there is a kind of believer you will start becoming and find it he says stay there let me submit to you that process of transformation which doubles as the process of training is the hardest period for a believer's life because even if you are a husband and a wife 
your trainings will be different. Hmm. This is where men are separated from boys. And God can give this man an instruction and say for the next two years, every 12 midnight to 3 a.m. in the morning, I will be meeting with you. So you find out that this guy, whereas for another person, he has the luxury of sleeping. But because of what God needs to do in his life, 12 a.m., the Holy Ghost is there in his room. <sighs> and he wakes up. He can be tired. Sometimes you can pity him and say, won't you rest? And heaven says, no. There is a kind of person he needs to become. And the king's business requires haste. Every day, 12 to 2. Sometimes with sleepy eyes you are praying. Sometimes with sleepy eyes you are studying. And one day, the God of heaven, the one who visits men, he will visit this gentleman and give him a call and place a mantle on his life. It is when that mantle comes and you begin to see what that mantle can do. You look at his life and say, is this not the carpenter's son? Uh -uh. He was the carpenter's son. But this version of him is not the carpenter's son. This is Ephesians 2 and verse 10. This is what he has become. We are his workmanship. Recreated in Christ Jesus. Look at it. Ephesians 2.10 I'm saying this because we are going to pray. Somebody must, your destiny must be redirected back. Redirected back in the name of Jesus Christ. We are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works which God had before ordained before ordained that we should walk in them. Anybody you see that you admire in the kingdom, whether as a preacher, as a businessman who loves Jesus, can I tell you, midwifing their salvation experience and their manifestation was this painful season of training. Can I give you one more example? The Bible talks about a young boy called Joseph. Joseph was the least of his brothers. Am I right on that? The innocent boy went to go and sleep and suddenly had a dream. In that dream, he saw the sun, the moon. Please give me a bit of, increase the volume for me a bit so that we'll pray. The sun, the moon, and the 11 stars bowing. He got up and came to his brothers and said, Daddy, I went to bed and this is what I saw. And Jacob looked at him and said, Ah! So among all my children, finally I've seen the person. This is the one the mantle is looking for. So one day you are saying, I will bow to you. Your mother will bow to you. When the brothers had it, they were angry. But for as long as Joseph was willing, there was a pathway. Don't just celebrate the Joseph in the palace. Celebrate the one who agreed to go and see his brothers that entered the pit. When Joseph was in the pit, I'm sure he would say, God, what is this? What is the meaning of this? Why am I the only one who is in the pit among my brothers? Then he was sold. You would have called it retrogression. But look at the invisible hand of prophecy that was moving that boy. I hope you know Egypt was his place of dominion. Look at how he got there. He gets to Egypt and he begins to serve Potiphar. And that grace on his destiny was so speaking to the point that Potiphar's wife, huh? Potiphar's wife now looked at the innocent gentleman. And when she looked at him, the Bible says she began to seduce him and look at what he had to, he had to, he had to, to endure so much. Eventually, it took him to the prison. The prison is a mysterious place in the path of destiny because the prison is where both good and bad people meet the prison is like the cross but jesus you will still hang there if you are a thief you will still hang there so don't judge people when you see them on the cross because you will not know who is jesus and who is the thief the cross is where both good and bad people hang the prison is where both joseph and the wine presser is there these are two areas and these are two places in life and destiny when you find yourself in the 
to find yourself in the cross, you must be sensitive. Joseph is in the prison. Watch this. Not knowing that is the path to destiny. And then, overnight, to cut the long story short, that young boy rises and becomes a prince in Egypt. And Pharaoh said, I am Joseph. And it is only at thy word that things will happen in Egypt. Now, you would admire him and say, I love Joseph. I want to be like Joseph. No, there is a pathway that leads to Joseph. Joseph is not only a name. Joseph is a code that reveals a kind of believer. Esther is a code that reveals a kind of believer. Elijah is a code that reveals a kind of believer. Are we together now? Gideon, all these names you call in the Bible, they are not just names of human beings. They are, they are secret pathways in the spirit that men can follow, including Jesus. Apostle, I sense that I carry the destiny of Abraham. You better be ready to give up Isaac. You better be ready. Uh -uh. If ye be, <laughs> it says if you are the children of Abraham, you will do the works of Abraham. I want a double portion of Apostle Paul's mantle. Apostle Paul is not just the name of a man. There is a road in the realm of the spirit that is named in honor to such a man. You see, do you know why God names himself as God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? The God of Abraham is not the God of Isaac in terms of the manifestations. It is still the same God. But the way God deals with you as the God of Abraham is not the way he deals with you as the God of Isaac. This man pioneered virgin dimensions in the spirit to the point that God named himself after their experience. So he said, who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord and who shall stand in his holy place? He said, he that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive a blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. Then he says, this is the generation that seek you that seeks you O god of jacob do you know what that means the god of jacob is the god of encounters every time you want an encounter god will refer you to the experience of jacob because a man walked with god and pioneered that virgin dimension in the spirit that anytime a man wants an encounter with god the biblical figure to study is jacob your assignment is that at the end of your life your destiny will add to the names of God that there should be a kind of name that God will be called on account of your experience your experience should give God a name Isaac Jacob and Abraham Isaac and Jacob are not the only names God wants to be called he wants to be called the God of Joshua Selman but you see it's not just to say the God of Joshua Selman in terms of an anointed man. No. It is a pathway in the spirit that you follow. You follow it so excellently. God honors you by naming himself. Now, watch this. So every time you come to God and God reveals your destiny to you, you will have an array of spiritual pathways that leads to specific kinds of believers. You will all be believers, but the geography of your assignments are not the same. So if you see yourself being Esther in the spirit, your next assignment is to find out the path Esther followed. Did the Bible not say, follow them who through faith and patience so the lady now begins to study the life of Esther. What did Esther do? The Holy Ghost starts leading you through that pathway. You want to be a great apostle Paul and you find out that five years after graduation, it looks like God has not told you what to do with your life. You want to walk, he stopped you. You want to travel abroad, he stopped you. You want to open a church, he stopped you. What should I do, oh God? You just pray, fast, and serve. Is that all I'm going to do with my life? Uh -uh. There is a kind of believer you are becoming. And that kind...
kind of believer that is consistent with my will for you will demand that you go through this pathway is someone learning now show us the ancient path will you lead us along eternal highway we want to follow the ways of jesus we want to enter your rest listen when i started walking with god you see i would go to bed in the night and i would have visions of saints and people who had departed i was seeing the faces of many people in the bible i did not understand what god was doing god was revealing that apostolic blueprint and the destiny but knowing where i was going was not enough listen ladies and gentlemen you get to a point where god now holds your hand and says now that i've shown you a bit of the picture can we go you see you choose as an can i use this okay please help me if i'm doing something wrong do you know you can choose to be tired and say lord this journey is too long and it's a senseless journey and to respect your will and leave you yes sir jesus was training the disciples to become what apostles this is how he thought he was training them that he would simply stop them from fishing defeat pontius pilate and any other person and then they will become great kings or co-rulers that was their plan but jesus kept driving them from crusade after crusade they were looking for trouble of the roman government one day they got angry they said see we have left all to follow you we don't know this path you are taking us to and jesus said aha there is there are a kind of believers i am turning you to become they didn't understand peter was angry james was angry they were all angry little did they know they would become apostles of the lamb but it was not just by confessing their destiny it was following a particular pathway when jesus died ah, i sense a strong anointing here mm. when jesus died and resurrected he said gentlemen you have continued with me you have stayed with me now wait at the upper room the power of the holy ghost will come on you that is the last phase i will discuss that tomorrow because it is salvation then transformation then empowerment empowerment is useless when there is no transformation transformation also talks of consecration talks of destiny discovery after enduring that season of training now your vessel is expanded and you're ready for the oil there are many people who just get saved and all they want is impartation look at the ministry of jesus the ratio of teaching and mentorship to transformation three and a half years to one day man of god this is the answer as to why you think you are not as powerful as you should be because all you are chasing after is anointing but there is a pathway in the spirit apostle why wouldn't god trust me and make a generation listen to me that space is available but there is a kind of believer that must carry that mantle and there is a pathway you must follow to become that kind of believer you want to speak to the sick and just have them get up it's not by saying stand up from wheelchairs you will embarrass yourself a thousand times there is a path in the spirit you must follow this is my first message tonight are you willing to follow that path in the spirit the bible says narrow is the way is that in your bible it didn't say that leads to heaven the way to heaven is not narrow the way to heaven is jesus narrow is the way that leads to life you begin that journey and sometimes you don't even know what you are doing people can insult you and say i thought you were going to become a great person you are an embarrassment to everybody and sometimes you will be walking alone god where are we going one year two years 
three years, one day, God will encourage you by giving you an opportunity to preach in one crusade ground. And you will see wheelchairs and crutches and you will be afraid because you see, he will not show you what is happening to you so you are not distracted. He's keeping your face on him. But you are not even aware you are changing. Moses did not know he had changed till he came down and saw him. The moment that happens to you, while pride wants to enter you quickly, he will take you. Let's continue the training. And while others are clapping and saying the crusade was a great one, God will talk as if he did not even see what you did. That is the training of the spirit. But you see, ladies and gentlemen, there is a level that you contend and have power with God where God will place something upon your head and give you the key of a generation and say, go, I've trusted you. These are the kind of people the Bible says he suffered no man to do them wrong. He reproved kings. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, this anointing thing that people think it just happens by impartation, no matter how much oil, the anointing itself eh, has an instruction that activates it. The anointing looks for death to walk. If the anointing does not find death, it will not work. And the pathway to death is this path that Job said there is a path which no fowl has gone to. That the whelps of the lion has not gotten there. This is why many people, although we are all saved, our destinies are different because others have chosen to take serious the ministry of the teaching priest, to take serious the ministry of the Holy Spirit, to take serious the ministry of the word. And by looking unto Jesus, their preordained destiny started being revealed. It is from Jesus you find your destiny. Follow me and I will make you. Follow me and I will make you. Not follow it. Here's what we do. I want to become an anointed man. And we follow Jesus. No. That is already a corruption. You follow him for him. It is while you are following him, you will start evolving into a strange kind of believer. When you evolve into that strange kind of believer, then those who want to attest to your training now will call you Reinhard Bonke. Others will call you Benihin. Others will call you T.L. Osborne. They are not just names of men. They are graduation certificates that people went through a school in the spirit. How does an ordinary woman called Catherine Coleman a woman who does not even speak loud. Where, where did she get the kind of power? The force. It is beyond just a man laying hands on you. It's, just, it's beyond a two weeks Bible study. It's beyond a one year Bible school. It's a part in the spirit. You follow alone. It may be a painful part. You may cry. But you follow. You follow by instruction. But happy is the man who endures the dealings of the spirit because the end of it is power with God. Listen, you will sustain an ability in the spirit that will make you very, very, very strange. Oh, oh, oh. Hear me, hear me, can I tell you, if the Holy Ghost comes here, all he will be doing is looking for men that he will redirect them. When he comes, you say, Mr. Man, you are following the path of Joseph, but this is the destiny of Elijah. Go this way. This is what happens in conferences like this, redirections. You find out that while you are standing, no, 
that two two hour prayer you were praying why did you stop go back that is the training of elijah why did you stop it listen please help those under the anointing listen you don't choose what path to follow it has been preordained when you follow jesus in following him diligently you will start evolving there is a kind of believer that you must assume for your purpose and your destiny to stand man of god the holy ghost will not just move in your meeting because you are in pentecostal there is a track record in the spirit a track record of death a track record of submission what name will you reveal to generation on account of your training with the spirit yola where are those who god is looking for in this end time if there is a prophetic summon and every region is blowing their shofar where is the shofar of yola we are yet to hear it where are the apostolic and prophetic voices that have been trained by the spirit to rise and sound that alarm where are the prophetic psalmists where are the worshipers we're not talking of special number no we're talking of songs as loud as in the spirit Hallelujah. Hear me. Hear me. Even Jesus, your Jesus, watch this. You would think because he was the Son of God, he will automatically become a savior. Do you know the difference between the baby in the manger, the teenager at age 12? The young man at age 30, the one hanging on the cross and the one sitting on the throne, they were not the same. No, the one in the manger was not just a teenager walking. That was training going on. At age 30, that baby had come, walked on by the Spirit of God. The Bible says, and the Holy Ghost drove him into the wilderness. There are many, many wilderness that is not the devil that drives men there. It's the Holy Ghost himself that drove men. And when he went there, he prayed, he fasted. And then the Bible says Satan came to tempt him, overcame him by the word, and returned in the power of the Spirit. And when that happened, the heavens were opened over him. You want to become savior? Jesus did not become savior by teaching. When he taught, they did not call him savior. When he taught, they called him rabbi. To become savior, you die. You don't teach. The price for becoming a savior is not a teacher. The price for becoming a savior is death. And the Bible says, savior shall come out of Zion. So if you are going to be a savior to a generation, it will take more than Rema and Greek and Hebrew. No, the price for all of God is all of you. Your pride, your ego, your accomplishments. Tonight, hear me. I hear my spirit how long that's what God is saying how long will we wait for you how long will we wait for your manifestation how long until prophecy comes to pass in your life how long until the healing anointing starts working how long until the prophetic is activated how long until the apostolic is released
Parakato Shabrande Geberekusiata Elekefe Senika Parusiata Krate Ketete Kapareka Tusia Kraska Fada Katebe Lekatosh Ketebras Hallelujah My assignment tonight, listen Please do not miss tomorrow The morning and the night session But I'm going to pray a very brief prayer for you right now my prayer for you tonight is for a quickening grace there are many of you times already against you i want to release that grace there is the quickening grace of the spirit that can cause you to be alive unto god alive unto righteousness consecrated set apart unto that which your destiny demands in christ this is my prayer for you and as that grace comes upon you i want you to leave this place tonight with the consciousness of that grace the consciousness of the working of that spirit for some of you that grace will cause you to begin to repent of certain ways for some of you that grace will cause you to submit to the purging of the spirit that certain things leave your life for some of you that grace will activate your prayer life again activate your word study life activate your passion for the things of god father i stretch my hands upon the men and the women in this place in the name of jesus christ at the count of three i want you to shout that name jesus the one who is deserving of your followership and as you shout that name grace will rest upon you are you ready now one, two, three, shout Jesus. Take that grace. Take that grace. Take that grace. Take that grace. Please bring them out very quickly. Can you bring them out? Whether you are an usher or not, just bring those under the anointing quickly. In the name of Jesus, that anointing is coming upon you. Coming upon your prayer life. Whether you are an usher or not, please bring them out quickly. Just direct them. Can, can someone help me speak to them so they understand what I'm saying? Those under the anointing, please bring them out for me. Whether you are an usher or not, you pick them and bring them out. That's what I'm saying. There is a reason why I ask that they come out. Paleke sotes kosiata. I'm seeing fire fire and I'm seeing the number 27 the Lord is saying is reigniting the Christian experience of many I don't know where you are but at the count of three you will shout that word fire one two three burning everything Everything that needs to die should die. Everything that needs to burn should burn. Everything that needs to give way should give way. Destiny beckons on you. Your preordained destiny beckons on you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 Hallelujah. Hear me. I'm hearing saviors of families there are some of you the mantle to deliver your families on you i don't know where you are but i stretch my hands may that man to find you now you are the one ordained by destiny to deliver your family from witchcraft to the to deliver your family do not allow the devil destroy your family do not allow the devil 
your family members to hell. I release that mantle, that call of destiny. Saviors of families, saviors of families, saviors of families. You may not look like it, but go through the training. You may not look like it, but follow the pathway in the spirit. The end of it is power. The end of it is glory. The end of it is grace. Even grace multiplied. Whether you are young or old, I came to call for something from within your spirit. Deep, calling unto deep. Deep, calling unto deep. We're wrapping up already. Deep, calling unto deep. And even those of you outside, don't think because you are outside, you are out of the program. Open up your spirit and receive that which God is doing. Hallelujah. Before I pray for those in front, there are two prayers we are going to pray tonight. The first prayer is a prayer of repentance. To repent means to realign back to God's pattern. Open your mouth right where you are and say, Father, I repent of carelessness. I repent of giving room to all kinds of things in and around my life. Are you praying? let me pray for all those in front father you have brought these ones by your spirit young and old in the name of jesus i stretch my hands that apostolic fire that ignition that has come upon you for many of you is a fire unto repentance for some of you is a fire unto pruning for some of you is a fire unto purification purifying every dross every flesh and everything that must give way for the glory i stretch my hands in the name of jesus may your training with the spirit begin may your training with the holy ghost begin may your training with the holy ghost begin may men and women of power emerge from this conference hallelujah please hear me tomorrow morning and tomorrow night particularly if you are a man of god please do not miss the remaining part of the session there is what i want to show you by the spirit my assignment in coming to yola is to stand in partnership with the holy ghost to produce men of glory and power indeed not just men of god that that veil be torn from your eyes to show you that pathway that leads to glory indeed in the name of jesus christ for all of you who are in front here i ask that they bring you out so that i'll pray for you i declare that that hand of god upon your life 
it will not rest till your destiny emerges in the name of Jesus day and night you will have encounters by the spirit until destiny is birthed in you for in Jesus name we pray my last function tonight please no moving around those who are in front as many of you who can please you can just rise and return back to your seat rejoicing I want to make an altar call please listen carefully an altar call is everybody's business what is an altar call it's a proposition that you come and make it right with Jesus it is a proposition that you come and rededicate your life to Jesus it's a proposition that you take Jesus seriously beyond church beyond man of God beyond religion hear me there are many of you from the time I began to teach using this man and this my dear pastor friends here as examples by the way God bless you gentlemen thank you may God honor you in Jesus name there's someone here you are up the balcony you are outside and the moment I began to teach the Holy Ghost was telling you this is you and he's calling you I don't care how long you have been in church I don't care what you have done or not done listen to me if you cannot come and make it right with Jesus there is no possibility for this kind of life that I described his gift to you is righteousness his gift to you is life eternal I'm going to count one to five be mindful of those on the ground as you're coming so you don't match on them and I know there has to be someone I'm not looking for everybody but I'm looking for one sincere person who is saying apostle I'm not going to lie I need Jesus run like there's fire on the mountain and come right in front come and stand here I count one to five and I begin to pray one are we celebrating them as they come 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 Ubangichi kai sayabo na kirma masunanka Ubangichi na doka kasunanka Ubangichi kai sayabo na kirma masunanka Ubangichi Run to Jesus don't sit back there Oh, when the master beckons on you, come to him genuinely. Come, 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 apostle. I need to make it right with Jesus. Come, there's space for you. Come. Some of you are crying. Don't be ashamed of your tears. Some of you want to come, but you are ashamed of your friends. Leave them alone and come to Jesus. Can I tell you, there are some of you, the fire that has come upon you this night, even while you go home, in your bed, on your bed in your sleep this is a fire that will continue to burn even all through this conference that fire has come to stay now look at me please those of you in front I want to appreciate you for the courage to leave your seat leave your friends leave your ego leave your reputation and come and stand before Jesus some of you are making this decision for the very first time but some of you are sincerely rededicating your lives you're saying, Apostle, I cannot truly say my work with Jesus Christ is effective. And the reason is because I've allowed all kinds of sins and weights. Jesus is giving you a new beginning. For all of you who are here, lift your right hand high above your head and say after me as loud and as clear as you can. And while they are praying this prayer, let me beckon on those who are following our viewers online across the globe those who might be watching live or those who are watching by way of rebroadcast just because it's a rebroadcast does not mean that it is late to make it right with jesus so as i lead these precious people to pray 
make sure that you participate in the prayer those in front here together say after me lord jesus, lord jesus. one more time say lord jesus, lord jesus. Tonight, tonight i have heard your word I believe in you that you are the son of God I believe that you died for me I believe that you rose again for my justification right now I receive Jesus into my heart as my savior my lord and my king I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. I am a child of God and I live for Jesus forever. God bless you. Keep your hands lifted. Father, thank you for these precious ones. Thank you for this harvest. Many have come to you. In the name of Jesus and by the authority of scripture, I declare their sins forgiven. And in the name of Jesus, I declare that you are bona fide recipients of the life of God. From tonight until forever, the hand of God is upon you. I call you the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You go forward ever and backward never. And any satanic plot to thwart your Christian experience, I come against it right now. In the name of Jesus Christ amen and amen now here's what i want you to do for me there are a number of you here so i want you to follow just turn to the back and you will see it uh, there are counselors waving their hands i know there are a number of you but please just gently in concert just follow these counselors there are many of them so they'll have a word with you very briefly and then you'll be back let's honor them as they go everybody give them a big god bless you upper room is this the best you can do Yola. Hallelujah. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray, pray, pray for your destiny. Salas kade bas kana kata branda kate katos. Kate branda kata pakotos koto pray kate kene kata. The face of development, Lord, grant me the discipline.